Well, Mark Cuban is a billionaire, owns the Dallas Mavericks, is one of the lead investors on the show Shark Tank, so he has some credibility in trying to forecast the future of the economy. He's recently warned that the next 10 years will see more economic disruption than the last 30 have, which is saying a lot, and he says that artificial intelligence will create the world's first trillionaire, in addition to eliminating an awful lot of jobs. We sat down with him to talk about the future of work in America. Here it is. You really believe that we're going to see an economic upheaval because of robotics and AI? No question. You know, we, we're going through an evolution in technology. It used to be you told computers what to do, and they followed your instructions, they followed your algorithms, and, and gave you the answer. Now you tell computers what to do, and now, then they start to generalize and start to create new answers. It used to be that you, they were descriptive, then they were a little bit predictive. Now they're becoming prescriptive. And right. that ability to learn and generalize and be prescriptive is changing everything. So what does it mean for workers? What does it mean for employment? I mean, the, ob the obvious outcome seems to be a lot fewer people with jobs. Do you think that's what's going to happen? I think in the short term, yes. I think there's going to be quite a bit of displacement. If you work for software rather than software working for you, you're probably at risk. If you're doing repetitive, if, you're, if your job is repetitive and you're doing the same thing over and over in short bites, your job is definitely at risk. Um, there, when machines get a little bit smarter, and I'm not talking about a Terminator type world, but right. just, a, just smart enough to do repetitive tasks, then those jobs are going to be replaced. And the same issue applies with robotics. So you've already seen, obviously, the people in the industrial economy are out of work and have been for a while. You're, you're about to watch truck drivers, lorry drivers, taxi drivers go out of business because of self-driving cars. What's the next group of professions that's going to be eliminated by technology, do you think? Customer service, people who do repetitive things, you know, um, ticket takers. Um, receptionists, I mean, just the, the more simplistic the job, and I don't mean to, to denigrate someone's profession, right. that's really not where I'm trying to get at, but the, the more repetitive the job, the simpler it is to replace. So the service economy is what you're saying, the, the thing that we're supposed to In be based on. In a lot of respects, on. yeah. Right. So you've got about a third of the American population not working already, massive, massive numbers of people sitting out. If you increase that, I mean, the, the political ramifications of that could be really consequential. And Enormous. You can see. Yeah. Right. So Very why are so. we why are we accelerating? The government actually pays for some of the research that is bringing this about. Why is the government doing that? Why should it be doing that? Because you have no choice. Because guys like me are going to push technology no matter what. I don't need government subsidies. I don't ask for government subsidies. But I'm still going to push the technology envelope because, you know, that, that's what I do. That's the American way. And I'll create a lot of jobs on the way, but potentially there's going to be disruption. You can't try to be a Luddite, and I'm not saying you are, but you can't try to hold back progress. Because the last thing we want, and we're seeing, a little, we're seeing this already a little bit in robotics, you don't want a foreign power. You don't want another country country taking the lead in, right. in the areas of artificial intelligence and telling us what we can do and defining because we're seeing that in robotics already we're not the leader in robotics and I wrote a blog post saying that rather than just trying to make our roads a little nicer make our bridges safer which are needed we should be spending money to build infrastructure just like the president said that he was giving money to NASA and that was important and I agree but we also need to invest in robotics we don't want to be dictated to in how we deal with manufacturing we want to take the lead and see where we can take it well that that seems fair I wonder so, as you point out, this is going to result in an even greater migration of wealth into a smaller number of hands, a trend that we've seen in progress for yeah. the past 15 years. But where's the obligation right. on the part of the people benefiting to everyone else? I mean, Henry Ford paid five bucks a day to workers at the height of the Depression, yep. not because he had to, but out of noblesse oblige. The modern tech class gives less to charity, cares less about its workers, it seems to me, as an observer, than any group of moguls in American history. Why is that? And shouldn't that change? Well, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't have data one way or the other. But here's what I've suggested. I've suggested rather when, when you've laid off somebody from a job, not only do you, A, retrain them, because, and that's, there's uncertainty attached with that because we don't know what to retrain people for. I think in 10 years, a liberal arts major is going to be more valuable than a programming major is today. Huh. But that, that's a different issue. But I think when, when, you're, when you're transitioning people from the old school jobs to what can be done or even if you can hire them, rather than just paying them, I think you know, they should be paid in stock. 
and because dealing with income equality, cash doesn't do it when you're investing at 2% interest rates. Cash yeah. doesn't do it when you don't know how to invest in the stock market. But if you retain equity, I think there's value there and you can participate just like the owners of the company do. Look, the, the, the Fortune 100 companies know this is a problem. Every single Good. one that I've spoken to realize this is a problem and I know, you know, that's one of the reasons I've been able to talk to them because it's, it's a conversation, it's, a, it's an issue we all know we need to solve and deal well, with. Well, amen. I'm with you on that. Mark Cuban, thanks a lot for that. I appreciate it. Anytime, Tucker. I really appreciate it.